Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so great to see you all here bright and early. Uh, my name is Deborah, and I'm just taking a moment to welcome you and to say good morning and to update you on a few things and a few announcements. So as people come in and find their seats, we just want to remind you that we do abide by the government bylaws for social distancing and face masks. So as you come in, please be sure to sit in a row that is marked with a yellow tape on either end of your row. We are asking that everybody sit in every other row, and this will help you do that. And once you get in your row, be sure to uh, distance yourself from the next family in your row by at least three seats, okay? Also, face masks. We ask that you keep those on while in the building. Um, there are places in the building that are deemed non-publicly accessible areas. This is one of them right here on the stage. So everyone up here serving will not have their masks on, but we will be sure to keep social distance, all right? Well, it's that time of the year. Christmas is literally next week. Can't believe it. There's lots of happenings going on for Christmas. We want to make you aware of our Christmas services that are coming up. We're having two uh, Christmas Eve services, one at 3 p.m. and another one at 5 p.m. Also on Boxing Day, we are having one service at 10 a.m. And now both of those services, you can register online now. So if you want to come to uh, either of those services or both, be sure to go online today and register today to attend, okay? Also, in the effort to help people in our community uh, in need, we are running a Christmas food drive. Okay, and that's happening right now. You may have walked in and seen some blue bins in the lobby. In order to participate in that, we ask that you bring a non-perishable food item when you come to church at any time. Drop that off in the bin when you come in. The donations are all going to support Regeneration Outreach in Brampton. Um, that's a great ministry. If you want to know more about them, uh, visit their website, regenbrampton.ca. Uh, also, we have another outreach, really cool one. We've been doing it for a few years. Uh, we have the blessing of doing it again, and it's called Angel Tree. It's an initiative by the Prison Fellowship of Canada. And what that is, is Angel Tree um, gives people the opportunity to purchase a gift for a child on behalf of a parent that is incarcerated in prison. So you get to show the love of Jesus Christ to that child on behalf of their parent. It's, it's wonderful. We have seen firsthand the amazing things that's happened in, in the lives of family and children through this ministry. If you want to get involved, uh, there will be more information and a link to register in our newsletter coming out tomorrow. So be sure to look out for that. If you're not already subscribed to receive that, you can stop by the welcome desk. I'd be more than happy to help you get subscribed to receive that. All right? So... We want to remind you, keep filling out those connection cards. We want to hear from you. We love hearing from you. So be sure to do that today. Let us know how we can be praying for you and your family. If you are new here, it's your first time here, welcome. So glad you're here worshiping with us today. Uh, we want to say thank you and meet you after the service. So don't rush out. Stop by our welcome desk. We have a small gift there for you to thank you for coming. For those of you who call Hope Mississauga your home church, we encourage you to continue giving online. You can do so at our website, on our church app, or by texting 84321, all right? So it's Singing Sunday. It's Singing Sunday today. We are so excited. Um, we want to start by asking you to stand. We have, we're going to start on a high note this morning. It's going to be awesome. I want to welcome Rochelle. I want to welcome Anthony and our own Phil Darko as they kick us off with a little bit of Christmas hip-hop. Yeah, 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 yo. Got it by the lot, like a root. I came in for Christmas dinner, but you gotta take your shoes off and drag. Is what we sipping while we waiting for the fixes. And she's all inside the kitchen. I'm just thinking, what my hit is eggnog with a splash of rum. Drum a boy, going rub a pump. Drum a boy, going rub a pump. Mary, you know you gon' have a son. Did you know? And we gon' praise his name. God with us. Yeah, I'm glad he came. Welcome to the party. This is celebration. God so loved the world, Jesus came to make a payment. From the God and plan devised, it's the execution. Virgin birth inside a major, yeah, he came to do this. God inside of flesh, yeah, the enemy don't want to smoke. Watch me rolling up with a freaking sense of murder. Go to town without a bed. Savior came so we can have a hope. Merry Christmas, cause we all so filthy animals. The greatest gift ever given was a child in a manger. Got it by the lot like a Rudolph. That's my neighbor with a suit on Adding the flavor like a bouillon The greatest gift ever, ever given was ever, a child ever, a ever, Got it by the lot like a Rudolph That ain't my savior, that's my neighbor with a suit on Adding the flavor like a bouillon The greatest gift ever given was a child hey. in a manger uh. And I 
Michael's here to wrap it. Yeah. My savior's body broken like you tearing yeah. out the plastic. Lungs full of blood, yet thirsty, it was tragic. Magic. Spirit aids, and he rose up from the grave like, like it, it was magic. magic. Beat down death, like his boxing day. Freed from it all, yet my debt is paid with this little light of mine. Oh dear, I like the way pulling through for all my hopes. God is whipping, so I slay. My God always gives good gifts to his kids. He gave a son to die, now I'm dying just to live. He was tweaking while I'm preaching, I do it for the kids. And my feet is by the fire, it is what it is. Was naughty this year, he talked to me nice. My stocking runneth over, I raise up the price. Praise the sun on my darkest days, that's the fight. And just be like the shepherds on that starry night The greatest gift ever given was a child And a manger Guided by the lie like a Rudolph That ain't my savior, that's my neighbor with a suit on Adding the flavor like a bouillon The greatest gift ever given was a child in a manger Guided by the lie like a Rudolph That ain't my savior, that's my neighbor with a suit on Adding the flavor like a bouillon The greatest gift ever given was a child time for Phil and Anthony and Rochelle. Merry Christmas, Hope Church. It's good to be together. Let's lift our voices together. I'm going to try to lift my voice. Let's sing. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, and mourns in lonely exile. Until the Son of God appear Rejoice, rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee away Come on Oh come now day spring Oh come now day spring come our spirits by thine advent here Disperse the gloomy clouds of night In death's dark shadows put to fly Rejoice, rejoice
sign of righteousness.
Saints lift it up. We thank you that you have come to us. And Lord, we want to join in the chorus. We want to add our voices to the, the song of creation, the song of the angels, Lord. We want to sing together with all of the saints, Lord, that we would comprehend the height and depth and width and breadth and to know the love that has come to us in Christ that you chose to dwell among us as Emmanuel. And so, Lord, we thank you for this morning, for this opportunity to sing your praise. You'd be, we pray that you would be with us now as we open your word. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, on uh, Singing Sunday, I wanted to uh, share with you a book about singing. This is one of my favorite Christmas stories outside of the Christmas story in the Bible. It's called The Song of the Stars by Sally Lloyd-Jones. The world was about to change forever and it almost went by unnoticed. But the leaves that night rustled with a rumor. News rang out across the open fields. A song drifted over the hills. The wind whispered it softly in the sycamore trees that waved their moonlit branches to the sky. A barn owl took flight. Woodland creatures stirred. It's time. It's time. In the pine woods, two deer raised their heads. A big brown bear sniffed the air. A red fox darted. The faces of little flowers lifted to the skies. It's time. It's time. The sky shouted it to the seas, that thundered it to the waves, that roared it to the great white whales, that sang it to the starfish in the deep, and tiny sandpipers danced it on shining sands. It's time. It's time. The running rivers bounded over boulders, and otters clapped and played and sang, and the ducklings that splashed and quacked, and the salmon that leaped and leaped. And tiny field mice and insects, and little creeping things, and sparrows, and robins. And every single blade of grass squeaked and hummed and chirped and sang, it's time, it's time. Wild stallions drummed it into the ground, get ready, get ready, be glad, be glad. On a lonely peak, a lion raised his strong head and roared it out to the empty wilderness. The mighty king, the prince of peace. All the stars joined together in a chorus that rang out through the heavens. The bright and morning star. And on a hillside overlooking a little town, sheep nuzzled their new lambs. The good shepherd. Suddenly, the angels lit up the whole sky and a great choir sang it out loud. It's time. He's come. At last. He's here. 
And in a little town, in a little shed, in a little window, a candle flickered in the dark. And a tiny cry rang out in the cold night air. And high above, a single star set in the highest heavens shone out brighter than all the others and poured down silver onto the little shed, a light to light up the world. The animals stood around his bed and the whole earth and all the stars and sky held its breath. The one who made us has come to live with us. And a young mother with no place to rest, nowhere to stay, kept it as a song inside her heart, our rescuer. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, lying on a bed of straw, wrapped in rags, a tiny little baby. Heaven's son, sleeping under the stars that he made. The song of the stars, the song of creation. Why do we sing at Christmas? Why is there something about Christmas music? I mean, I'm not talking about Wham! and Last Christmas. I'm not talking about Mariah Carey. I'm I'm talking about those songs that grip our hearts, that fill our eyes with tears. What is it about music and Christmas? It's because we are tapping into something that all creation realizes. We're tapping into the the greatest story ever told. The, The title for this brief message that I want to share with you before we get back to singing is this. Let heaven and nature sing. That's what we sing about. That heaven and nature and that we are joining as the faithful to come and to Sing. We, we, we sing about while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. If birds could talk, if trees could talk, if clouds could talk, if stars could talk, they would all be saying the same thing. Jesus Christ is awesome. And so we have the privilege of being able to do that and marvel at the fact that he has come to dwell among us. You know, in the Christmas story, I want to invite you to turn to Luke uh, chapter 1. Uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 1 uh, and chapter 2 of this morning. Uh, the Christmas story is filled with songs. Uh, you could call them hymns, you could call them carols, you, you, you could call them uh, poetry, whatever they are. But the Christmas story, at, at just about every turn, has a song, particularly in Luke's recording of the Christmas story. Luke seems to love music. And uh, what we have in Luke chapter 1 and 2 is kind of Luke's Christmas mixtape. Now some of you are familiar with mixtapes. Others of you little kids, you're going to have to ask your parents, like, what in the world is that? This is how we used to listen uh, to music. And you would make your friends a mixtape, and, and you would make it customized for them to let, you know about your, to let you know about how you feel about them, or a certain memory that you shared, or an adventure, a car trip that you're going to go on together. And a good mixtape was a true mixtape. It had to be a mix. You can't just have all the same genre or all the same band. Kind of like our church. How many church services have you gone to that started with hip-hop and ended with harmonica? Right? That's why I love our church. Everyone can find their groove somewhere along the line in in the course of of a worship service at at Hope Church. There's a mix, and that's a good thing. Now, the artists on Luke's mixtape, one of them's a teenage girl. Another one is an elderly member of the clergy. Then you've got some shepherds who are kind of the outcasts or the counterculture of society. And, and you've got all of these, then you've got supernatural beings, the angels are singing. And then you have these dear old front row saints, Anna and Simeon. 
I'm pretty sure Anna and Simeon's musical taste would have been different from Mary's, who was a teenage girl. I'm pretty sure the shepherds weren't listening to the same music and singing the same songs as Zechariah, who was a priest. There was a mix. And so in Luke's gospel, there are six singers, there are six worshipers, there's four real songs that have been um, really revered from Luke's gospel in church history. So we're just going to uh, quickly walk through all of these songs. The first one is called uh, Magnificat, and Mary is the one that sings this, this first song. The context in Luke chapter 1 is that there's really two miraculous pregnancies Mary's, of course, is the most miraculous because she's, she's a virgin. She's conceived um, as, as a virgin. That's a miracle. But Elizabeth is also a miracle pregnancy because she conceived, but, but she, she was too old to have children. And part of Gabriel's plan was to bring these two women together to confirm because you know, if an angel appears to you, you might be thinking, well, was that just me? Did I, you know, did I just eat like a burrito, that leftover burrito, and, and I just had a bad dream? Like, what was going on? And so Gabriel, we're going to see, the angels are always helping people connect the dots. Faith is never meant to be completely blind. And so God brought Mary and Elizabeth together. They're both pregnant. And they're, they're trying to figure out, is, is what Gabriel told me really true? And as soon as Elizabeth lays eyes on Mary, as soon as she hears Mary's voice, John, Elizabeth's son, leaps in her womb. And then Elizabeth shares that with Mary, and then Mary erupts into song. I'm in Luke chapter 1, verse 46. It says, And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. It's called the Magnificat because uh, Latin uh, Magnificat is, is, is how that word magnifies is, uh, is translated. My soul magnifies the Lord. Now, Mary is speaking in poetry here. And the way that we recognize Hebrew poetry is not, not the way that it rhymes. Plus, we're reading it in English so we wouldn't be able to get the rhymes. But we're... We're looking for parallelisms. This is the way Hebrew poetry works. You say point A, and then you balance it out with point B. You say it one way, and then you say the exactly the same thing in another way. It's called Hebrew parallelism. Look at chapter 1, verse 46. My soul magnifies the Lord. Now look at verse 47. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul, my spirit. The Lord my Savior. They balance one another out. She's speaking poetically. Her aim is to magnify the Lord. The whole aim of this service, every song, every transition, every melody, every lyric, the whole aim has been to magnify the Lord. That's Mary's aim. That's the reason why we gather as a church family. Look what she says in verse 48. For he has looked on the humblest state of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Notice how Mary marvels that God has noticed her, that, that he has looked on her humble estate. She says, everyone's going to call me blessed, not because she's blessed on her own. Look at the reason. She says in verse 49, for, this is the reason, everyone's going to call me blessed for or because he who is mighty has done great things for me. Mary knows she hasn't done any great things. Mary knows that she is not mighty, but she is not singing to magnify herself. She wants to magnify God to show that he is mighty and that he has done great things and that his name is holy. Verse 50, and his mercy is for, for, for those who fear him from generation to generation. Mary says, listen, God's done amazing things in my life, but it's not just about me. I mean, this has been going on from generation to generation, and we are benefits of a mighty God who does great things for the humble. Verse 51, he has shown strength with his arm. He's scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He's brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He's filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. Mary knew her Bible. Mary really here is just, her song is based off another song, a song sung by Hannah in the book of 1 Samuel, a song about reversals. The mighty have been humbled, the exalted have been brought low, and the humble have been exalted, and the hungry are now filled, and those who were filled are now going away 
empty. Again, this is how Hebrew poetry works. Contrast, balancing one another out. So she's marveling at all of these things. Verse 54, he has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. Mary is just simply marveling at God's plan and that she can actually play a role in this plan. That her, two times it mentions humble estate, that that she's lowly and yet God noticed her. And she's marveling at the fact that God has come and he is The Son of God is living inside of me. Mary can't believe that God has chosen her. Loved ones, this is the kind of marvel that should should come over all of us. I mean, I'm for sure never going to conceive the Son of God. And none of you are either, whether you're male or female. But loved ones, all of us can marvel at the fact that in a different way, The Son of God lives in us by His Spirit. Colossians 1 verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That we should say, God, you looked at me in my humble estate. There was nothing about me. I didn't earn this. It was your mighty hand, your holy arm. You have done great things for me. And just like Mary sang, so we sing. So that's the first track on uh, Luke's mixtape. Here's the second one. It's called Benedictus, and it's by Mary's relative, uh, Zachariah. So uh, Mary had traveled down from uh, uh, Mary had traveled down from Nazareth all the way to Judah to visit Elizabeth. And Mary goes back home. Mary took two trips down south while pregnant. By the way, not just not just one that we so often hear about. She made that trip multiple days to to go and visit. Elizabeth, when she, was, uh, when she was pregnant, went back to Nazareth. Back in, in, in Judah, Elizabeth is there with Zechariah. Elizabeth gives birth to their son. And up until this point, Zechariah hasn't been able to speak because he didn't initially believe what Gabriel had told him. And so Zechariah wasn't able to speak. Now, Zechariah had communicated somehow by writing. It says that he was using tablets and that sort of thing. Not like this kind of tablet, but like this kind of tablet. And he, was, he had communicated that the name of the child was supposed to be John, according to the angel. And the people were arguing, well, what do we call him? What do we name him? And then Elizabeth says, we're going to call him John. And then everyone's like, you can't name him John. You don't have a relative of that name. And then Zechariah is able to speak finally. And he says his name is John. And then he erupts into song. And this song is called Benedictus because the first word in verse verse 68 is the word blessed. Blessed benediction. A benediction at the end of a church service is a a blessing. So this this song is called a Benedictus. Look look at verse 67 and it says, And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation in the house of his servant David. Zechariah is not from the house of David. He's a priest. He's from the house of Levi. So he's not talking right now about their child. He's talking about the child that is in Mary's womb right now. But he understands the role that John is going to play in the big picture. But he's marveling about the king who is about to be born. He says, as he spoke, um, verse 70, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to grant to us, that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all our days. Then he starts speaking to his own child in verse Verse 76, and you, child, will be called prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord because the Lord was coming. The Lord was in Mary's womb, but John was going to go before the Lord. Christ is Lord at his birth. John was going to go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people and the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death, 
to guide our feet to the way of peace. John had a, had a role, and, and, and Zechariah is singing about this, to teach people about their need for forgiveness. And then when they understand their need for forgiveness, the sun was going to rise in verse 78. The sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness. Zechariah, he mentioned uh, Abraham. Mary also mentioned Abraham in her song. Zechariah is putting the pieces together. He's seeing the fulfillment of all of these prophecies. And he says this sunrise is coming. This light is going to shine in the darkness. Zechariah no doubt has this passage of scripture from the Old Testament on his mind. Sorry, our screen bulbs burned out this morning. That's why we have these TVs. I can't really see that much. Isaiah 9-2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. And so Zechariah is seeing that this, this child that, that Mary is about to give birth to is the one who is going to bring light into the darkness. So when we sing with Mary, we marvel that God would recognize our humble estate and would do mighty deeds on our behalf. And when we sing with Zechariah, we marvel that, that God has shone his light into the dark, the darkness of our sin. God has shone light and made a way for us to be forgiven. That's the, the third track. Sorry, that's the second track. Here's the third track. It's called Gloria, and it's sung by the angels. So Mary and Joseph make their trip down to the, uh, the really province or the, the, the territory of Judah. They go to Bethlehem. Jesus is born there. An angel appears to shepherds uh, who were watching their, their flocks that night. And they announce that, that Christ has been born. There's a Savior. And here's what you've got to look for. You've got to find a baby. Sounds a little random, but you've got to find a baby. He's going to be sitting in a feeding trough. Okay, He's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes. That's normal for a baby. But he, they're gonna, he's going to be in a trough. That's not normal. So go around and try to find something that looks like that. Try to find a baby in a trough. And after the, after the angel gives these details that the Savior has been born, then innumerable angels, this massive choir, appears in the sky. And here's what they say in verse 14. This is the, the third song. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The angels declare that glory belongs to God in the highest. This is the whole reason why Jesus had to come. Listen, we were created for God's glory. We were designed to reflect his glory. We were made in his image. But rather than fulfilling the purpose for which we were created, which was to give glory to God, we started stealing the glory for ourselves. That's what Adam and Eve were about when they took the fruit. They were saying, we, we want to live life without God. We want to make our decisions on our own. And so they became glory thieves. And all of us are glory thieves. The Bible says in, in Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The essence of sin is to, re, is to reject or refuse to give God glory and to either take the glory for ourselves or to give glory to something or something else and worship it as an idol. But the angels have come to say, no, God's going to set things straight. The Savior has been born so that glory would go to God. And then the result after that is, and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. Zechariah mentioned peace in his song. Now the angels are mentioning peace as well. How is, we so often talk about peace. Why can't we just have peace on earth? Why can't this region of the world have peace? Why can't these two groups of people have peace with one another? We need to understand there will not be peace on earth until there is glory to God. The reason why there is no peace on earth is because we are trying to take the glory for ourselves. And rather than having glory in its proper place, we fight and kill and disagree and, and accuse and attack one another. There will be no peace on earth until there is glory to God. And Jesus came to bring us peace. Peace, firstly, with God. For, that we would be forgiven for our sin 
and trying to steal God's glory. And once we have peace with God, once we know that we are forgiven, then that changes. Once our vertical relationship is changed, our horizontal relationships change. And we're able to forgive one another and live at peace with one another. No doubt, the, the shepherds at this point wouldn't have understood the ultimate plan of God, that this peace was going to come at a price. Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6 says, prophesying about this son when, when he grew to the age of 30, this is what would happen to him. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him, notice this, was the chastisement that brought us peace. Upon him, he was chastised. He was pierced. He was crushed so that it would bring us peace. Glory to God. And peace on earth. This is the price of peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Our sin went to Christ. So that we could be forgiven. So that his righteousness and his peace could be extended uh, to us. That's why we sing things like Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild. Why? Because God and sinner are reconciled. Because the chastisement that brought us peace was poured out on Jesus. So that's the third track. Then we turn to the shepherds and how they respond. So they go. They kind of randomly look for this, you know, a, a baby in a trough. You know, they're asking around. Anyone seen a baby in a trough anywhere? Anyone, anyone seen a newborn child in sort of an odd location? And poor Mary, she's traveling, she's pregnant, she's traveling all of this distance, both ways, now she's expecting, this is the, their first baby, you know, she's already been nesting, she's been planning, she's, this was not how she was expecting the arrival of her baby, there's nowhere to put Jesus, so they put him in a trough, and that now people start showing up, she's recovering from giving birth, and now the shepherds are here, and she's like, are they from child services, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen here. But again, angels, the angels, listen, God is not into blind faith. Every time the angels appear to someone, so now we've so they've appeared to Mary, Elizabeth, now the shepherds, they want to connect the dots. Here's how you can verify what we've said. So the shepherds go and they find a baby, and he's in a trough. And they're able to share that with Mary. Mary's able to share their story. Mary treasured these things in her heart. The shepherds go off and start uh, sharing with everybody. Look at chapter 2, verse 20. There's no title. There's no lyrics to this song. I just call it untitled uh, by the shepherds. But look at chapter 2, verse 20. And the shepherds return, notice this, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. So they were glorifying God. They were praising God. That's what we're supposed to do. And again, I think the shepherds' style of music was a little bit different. Like shepherds were a little bit out there, you know? I think the shepherds might have been, they might have been the indie rockers or, or the hip hoppers. So, you know, not everyone was totally into what they were into. So their, their form of worship, their form of praise would have been a little bit different from everybody else's. But they glorified and they praised God in their own way. So amazing. So the shepherds, they have this little uh, untitled uh, song. And then we have the last sort of official song that's been recognized uh, by the church. This song is sung by Simeon uh, towards the end of Luke chapter 2. Now Jesus is about to be presented at, uh, at the temple. Um, sort of like a, like, a, like a child dedication like we practice here at, at Hope Church. There was an offering that, that was to be made. There was a number of rituals that, that were to be expected. And we're told about uh, Simeon in uh, Luke chapter 2. Look at verse uh, 25. It says, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And when he came in the Spirit, notice the repetition of the Spirit. He's filled with the Spirit. The Spirit had told him something. And he came into the temple that day in the Spirit, led by the Spirit. And this is what he says. It says and this is what he sees. And when the parents brought in the child, Jesus... 
to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, you are now letting your servant depart in peace. This, this song is called uh, Nunc Dimittis. Nunc is the, word for, the Latin word for now. Uh, Dimittis is the word for depart. Um, in the Latin translation, uh, now depart are the first two words in the sentence. That's why, that's, that's why this song uh, is called that. Now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Look what he says. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. He sees that, again, this is a light a light who is going to shine. He's holding the child. You, you know what it's like as, a, as, a, as an aunt or an uncle or a close friend or a grandparent when someone that you love ha- has a child. You, you hold the baby for the first time. You smell their head and you, hud- you cuddle them close and they grab your finger. And whether they're sleeping or if they're awake and you see their eyes, look what the Mars of Simeon here is holding Jesus like that. Now, again, poor Mary. I just, I, I don't know if she knew Simeon or knew about Simeon. Random stranger comes up and says, can I hold your baby? This is a new mom. And yet, here he is holding this precious little child. And he knows in that moment that he is seeing the salvation of the Lord. And he says that this is salvation that has been prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light of revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, Israel. It's a light of revelation. Again, so so many of these songs are really rooted in the prophecies of Isaiah. In Isaiah 49, verse 6, God, God says, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end. Of the earth. I mean, right at this point, they are at the center of Judaism. I mean, it doesn't get more Jewish than with a guy named Simeon holding a baby in the temple. This is the absolute center. You you can't go any close to the absolute center of what it means to be ethnically, culturally Jewish. But Simeon knows this isn't just a Jewish savior. This is a Savior who's going to be a light of revelation for all of the nations, for all of the Gentiles. And he praises God. So loved ones, Christmas is not just about us. Loved ones, Christmas is not just about us singing to ourselves and singing to God. Christmas is about us recognizing that we are called to be a light to the world and that this is a message that needs to be spread that's the Benedict, uh, sorry, the, the, the Nunc Dimittis. And then lastly, every good mix, mix, uh, a mixtape has a, has a bonus track. And again, if you don't understand what I'm doing with side A and side B here, just ask your parents, okay? There's a bonus track, and this is, this is Anna. Verse 36, and there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She's lived on her own all this time. She did not depart from the temple, notice, worshiping with fasting and prayer. She had been waiting all of this time and worshiping while she waited. And coming, verse 38, and coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Loved ones, Anna is an example of we worship while we wait. Loved ones, our world is, 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 is still broken. Christ has come to put it together. There is a first advent, but there is a second advent that we are waiting for. We want things to be made Right, and again, when we thought about Christmas in 2020, we thought, I can't wait until Christmas 2021 when things will be different. Sorry, things aren't different. We're still waiting. But we will worship 
while we are waiting. Because he has already come and he will come. And he sustained Anna for 84, however many years she was there in the temple waiting. She saw the fulfillment of God's promise and she was able, she came into the temple that day worshiping and giving thanks. And so loved ones, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to continue to sing. We're going to sing an old song and then we're going to sing a new song. We're going to mix things up. We're going to join with the song of the angels. Angels from the realm of glory, wing your flight over all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. All creation join in proclaiming God the Father, Spirit, Son. Evermore your voice is reigning to the eternal three in one. Loved ones, we, we will in, follow the invitation of this song, talking about the angels singing, and then it says, come and worship. Come and worship Christ the newborn king. Yes we're, wa- yes, we're waiting. Yes, we're discouraged. Yes, we're frustrated. Yes, we're wondering when this will end. But we will worship while we wait. And we will give thanks while we wait. And we will follow the invitation of this song. So let's get on our feet. We're going to worship. The song says, come and worship. Come and worship Christ the Lord, our newborn king.
resting in his mother's arms. A song on the horizon, ringing through the heavens. A long awaited Savior, come to set the captives free. Set the captives free. Come set us free. Sing hope has a name. Hope has a name. invite you to be seated if you're here in the auditorium. Uh, if you're joining with us online, we're so glad uh, that you were here with us. Hope, I hope that we can see you in person at our Christmas Eve services at 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. We're going to have a brief family chat here uh, in person, and everything that we're sharing right now will be shared in the newsletter on Monday morning. If you don't get our newsletter, you can visit our website and sign up for that. So if you're joining us online, you are loved. <laughs> 